The first thing we want to focus on is the definition of the term mean bond enthalpy. Well, mean is a term you come across in mathematics and it generally means an average. So a mean bond enthalpy is defined as being the mean or average amount of energy required to break or dissociate one mole of a specific covalent bond found in the gaseous state, but measured over a wide variety of different molecular environments. So it's kind of like saying, I'm looking at the average of the energy of a CH bond found in all the different chemical environments you might find a CH bond within. You can find CH bonds in alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids. The mean bond enthalpy is the average enthalpy of that, of one mole of that covalent bond um, being broken, taking into consideration all the various environments you may find that particular bond in. So now I'm going to take you through how to solve a bond enthalpy calculation or a bond energy calculation. Now students can sometimes find this quite hard because it involves a lot of multiplication, a lot of addition, and it's quite easy to accidentally miss out a bond energy and it can throw out the accuracy and precision of your calculation. So I'm going to try and take you through a really nice simple method that gives you really nice, precise, accurate results. Generally in questions you're presented with a table of information like this, which contains the bond and also the bond enthalpy associated with that bond. Okay, you'll also be given a, a question which contains an equation for a reaction taking place, a balanced equation. And your job will usually be to find the enthalpy change per mole for that particular reaction. Now the problem with the way it's presented at first in terms of the balanced equation is that if you're given molecular, molecular or structural formulae, they can be quite hard to interpret in terms of how many bonds you're dealing with. So the best thing to do is to convert those structural or molecular formulae into displayed formulae. Displayed formulae, as shown here, present all the bonds present within the molecules, single or double bonds, uh, and also give you the arrangement as well. And that's really useful because you can start to visualise how many bonds of different types there are present in the molecules of the reactants and the products. The second thing you want to do is to break your equation down the middle into reactants versus products and deal with the reactant side separately to the product side. That will help to control your calculation and also is important when we talk about Bendemex in a second. So first of all, what we do, we list all the bonds we can see of different types. So for example, if I count around this ethanol molecule, I can see one, two, three, four, five CH bonds. So I just record that and I make a list of all the different bonds I can see. I've got five CH bonds, one CC bond, one CO bond, one OH bond, and then three oxygen, oxygen double bonds and that accounts for all of my reactant bonds. Now, after that, I then do some basic calculations, bring in these enthalpy, um, these enthalpies for those bonds, those bond energies. So I do five times the bond energy of a CH bond given to me in the table, five times four and three. And I do that for every single bond shown, again, to the right magnitude. So for example, three oxygen, oxygen double bonds, so three times the uh, four, nine, six for that type of bond. And then I quickly calculate a subtotal for this information, this data. So 4,721 is all the bond energies of the bonds found within the reactants. That's sum of those values, the total of those values. Now, why do I deal with the products separately to the reactants? Because if I bring in my knowledge of energetics, I'm talking about this in terms of bendomex. Breaking bonds within the reactants is an endothermic process whereas making bonds within the products is an exothermic process. So I deal with the products as a separate process. And again, I count up and I can see there are one, two, three, four um, carbon oxygen double bonds and one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen hydrogen single bonds. So again, I write that down as my list to account for them. I add in the values for their enthalpies, multiply them by those numbers, and I get my subtotal as 5,998. This is where the final bond energy calculation comes into play. Applying the fact that bendo, endothermic processes, is a positive enthalpy change, and mex, exothermic processes, are a negative enthalpy change, I simply account for that in my calculations. So I do the sum of the bond energies of the reactants minus the sum of the bond energy of the products, i.e. the endothermic values minus the exothermic values, so it's essentially just reactant value minus product value. And here's my calculation shown there. And it gives me the overall enthalpy change for the reaction itself. 
as minus 1,277 kilojoules per mole. This is a highly exothermic reaction, which makes sense because it's a combustion reaction. So the key thing with these mean or bond energy calculations is to keep a nice neat list of the bonds involved with the reactants and products, do the subtotals of those two processes, and then take away the product value from the reactant value, and you'll always get the right answer. So I wanna finish with one more example of a bond energy calculation. And this one I've chosen on purpose because it links to a film I really enjoy, and hopefully a bit of snazzy editing, I can bring in an image of that film into the, the presentation. So the film I'm referencing here is The Martian starring Matt Damon. And hopefully if I click my fingers, an image of the film should appear now. So the scene I'm actually referencing from the film itself is where Matt Damon is trying to grow potatoes on the surface of Mars. And of course he needs a water supply. So he decides to use hydrazine, a fuel often used in space exploration, to produce that water through the combustion reaction. Now, unfortunately in the film itself, he gets the ratio of oxygen uh, slightly wrong and it causes a, a quite a large explosion. Something you probably want to try and avoid on Mars. And uh, <laughs> it gets it wrong initially, but eventually it gets it to work and it works quite effectively and he's able to cultivate potatoes on Mars. So I thought I'd go through a hydrazine combustion reaction uh, because it's quite a fun, uh, fun experiment in, in terms of the film, but also because it's another good example of a bond energy calculation. So again, you're given the um, equation itself and there it is. Uh, but again, you want to convert that into a more useful form like a displayed formula so you can see and visualize all the bonds involved. So I've done that below here and here for reactants to products. And remembering that re um, breaking bonds is endothermic for the reactants and uh, making bonds is an exothermic process. And then again, you start doing your accounting system. You start counting up different types of bond we've found within the reactants and products. So I can see there's one NN bond, uh, four NH bonds, and one oxygen, oxygen double bond. So I make a list of those for my reactants. I then bring in the associated bond enthalpies from the table, multiplying where necessary if there's more than one of that bond, and then create my subtotal for the bond energies of those um, reactants and the bonds within those reactants, which is 2,219. Do the same for the products. So I count up, there's one nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond, and then four OH single bonds. So again, I write those down as a list. I then find the associated bond energies from the table over here and multiply where necessary if there's more than one of that bond, create my subtotal for the bond enthalpies of the bonds found in the products, which is 2,797. I remember that breaking bonds is endothermic, making bonds is exothermic. So I take away the product value from the reactant value because it's exothermic uh, and I get my overall enthalpy change for the reaction itself as minus 578 kilojoules per mole. So hopefully that shows you that um, hydrogen is quite a useful fuel for, for space exploration because it, it burns well in oxygen. It releases a large amount of heat energy uh, as a result and it produces water and nitrogen inert gas as the main products, which are pretty safe from a um, space exploration point of view in terms of not being things you really have to worry about um, building up inside the space cabin, for example. So it, it makes sense that it's a, a useful fuel for that purpose. So I hope this has helped you to understand how to better organize your working when it comes to dealing with bond energy calculations, and hopefully you'll be able to deal with these more effectively in the future.